Very right, good. All right, it looks like we're recording today's event. Thank you very much to our PTO for hosting. Thank you to all of you who are here right now. Um, very few people are actually here, but that's okay. Uh, we are kind of reopening and inviting people back to the building. So I know that there was an invitation to come today. Uh, and I see a lot of people are just still accessing this through Zoom, which is okay as well. But we are recording it. We have some students here uh, who are an important part of our conversation today. And then we have Ms. Macover and Dr. Lau, who will be doing really a majority of the seventh grade conversation. So thank you for the PTO for continuing to host these events. Um, each year in the middle school, there are different kind of ages and stages and things that happen. So uh, this is the important part as we think about uh, the future of our current seventh graders. And with that, I'm going to hand it over to Ms. Macover. Good morning, everyone. Um, I'm Jen Macover, the seventh grade counselor. Um, I have a great role, and then I stay with the students for three years, which is really nice to build relationships and get to know students. Um, my counterpart here is Dr. Lau, um, and we're going to be talking a little bit about the seventh grade experience. And we have, um, and I just want to start by saying typically, uh, going from fifth to sixth grade is a huge developmental transition coming to the middle school. Um, all the changes um, to expect from elementary school. And with COVID last year, a lot of those experiences were stifled, both academically and socially. Uh, being in home, hybrid, we, your students really navigated uh, exceptional circumstances. Um, so seventh grade, we're really happy to offer a more traditional middle school experience. And with that comes a lot more novelty um, than they are used to in seventh grade uh, because they would have experienced a lot of things in sixth grade. Um, and we luckily have a couple of students here who have volunteered to kind of speak from their perspective of some of those changes from six to seven and some of the things that have opened up to them. And with that, you know, there's a lot of positive opportunities, but also some challenges in, um, you know, the readiness to be able to you know, handle all those differences uh, that they didn't experience last year. So we're going to talk a little bit about that. Um, we have two students, Anna Gambelli and Derek Goldberg, um, who are kind enough to kind of share, you know, what they're experiencing from their perspective. We're going to talk a little bit about communication and how you can get information from the middle school. Um, we're going to touch upon counseling curriculum, what I do to push into classes and and um, what's been going on as well to address some of the social emotional learning uh, this year. And uh, Mr. Lau's going to talk a little bit about home base. Um, that's something new this year uh, because they didn't experience it last year. We're going to touch upon some timeline um, things that, to expect in the future and then open it up to questions and answers. So we're really delighted to be here in person today, although it's just us here in person. Um, but I'm going to start by having um, Anna and Derek come up and speak a little bit about the middle school. We had some time to kind of talk about some things they want to touch upon, and I'm really happy that they're joining us today. So you can put questions in the chat. We only have one microphone, correct? Okay, let's see if that's working. So is that for each of us here? year was very different. Um, we had this whole COVID situation and um, the seventh graders didn't get the experience sixth grade as usual middle school students would. So last year we didn't have lockers, uh, we didn't have home base, and those are the two big things that I was looking forward to was lockers because uh, holding a big backpack is not very fun. So 
Uh, this year, um, we get to have most of what a normal seventh grader would have. Um, instead of two teachers uh, as of sixth grade, we have four, and uh, we have certain locker stops. And um, that really helps kind of manage time and um, kind of figure out like, oh, I'm gonna drop off my stuff here and then go there. And um, we also have a period called academic extension. Academic extension is a period that kind of rotates and between all of our classes, all of our academic classes. So on, um, for example, a day one, I would have my period one class. For a day two, I would have my uh, period two class and it just rotates around. So you kind of have that extra period for uh, an extra class. And sometimes the teachers let you do study hall, sometimes they give you some extra work. And it's a very helpful period to have in the day. So on the line of studying and getting some extra help, all teachers provide extra help one day a week. That could be Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday. All of those, all of the teachers will be there. They'll be answering questions, helping students with work if they need to. That's just one of the many extracurricular activities you can do in seventh grade. Seventh grade also opens the door to modified sports, which is the first activity that you're going to really have to try out for school based. So I do, uh, I did cross country in the fall, I've been doing indoor track in now in the winter. And those sports you don't have to try out for, those are more like a fallback that you can do if you don't make the team. But there are a lot of sports that are like that are for tryouts. Like in the spring, there was uh, there was volleyball, there was field hockey, and then boys and girls soccer. In the winter, there is modified basketball for both boys and girls, wrestling, and then gun up and go track. Um, we also have more team building than we did last year. We did do some team, team building, but we were limited because of COVID. So this year so far, we've had a bagel breakfast for seventh grade, um, which basically is exactly how it sounds. We go outside, uh, we get some fresh air, we get to you know, have some breakfast and kind of like socialize with our team which I think is very important because last year we really didn't get to uh, do all these things. And, you know, it was, um, it was very, it's very different than it is now. There's also a very large and wide variety of clubs that you can do. I do um, JJ and I stream and I did it last year and I had so much fun. So I just joined it again. There's a lot of different clubs. Animal Care Club, the Purple Press, and a lot more. And they all just have, I guess, their own little community. And some are more popular than others. But overall, all of the clubs are super fun. And I love looking at them to see like, what I would like to do next. So on the similar topic of clubs, all the clubs are run by teachers. And like Anna said before, you have four teachers this year instead of two, which is very different because you get you have to know more teachers. It'll, it may take the teachers a little bit longer to get to know you and your classmates. You also have uh, more opportunities for meeting new people because you have four classes, and each of those classes will have different people in them. Where you may have some people that you're only seeing in one class, some people that you're not seeing at all, that you were seeing last year. So overall, it's a very different experience, especially teaming-wise this year than last year. Kind of adding on to what Derek said, last year, you would have the same kids um, or classmates in all of your academic classes, and you'd only have two different teachers. But now this year we have a lot more opportunity to make more friends and socialize with other people because we have a more wide variety of kids. There's also because we are a small team, a uh, small grade, we have two teams. Uh, last year I think we had four, and um, there were less kids 
on a team. This year we have two, so there's more kids on that team. So um, during the recess last year, we were very limited because COVID precautions were so tight. So we weren't really able to do much. We had to, when it was cold, we would stay in our classrooms or when the two cohorts joined, we would stick to eat in the hallways and you weren't really allowed to like leave your designated area. This year, we have a lot more flexibility. We can go into the library. If we need to use some extra time to finish work or get some extra work, uh, look for a new book or read. And then we also have it split into half. We have one half is for lunch, where you eat in your designated area and are still to leave. But then you can go up to recess, which you can go up to the field, you can go up to the uh, gym if it's indoor or the theater if it's indoor. And you get to meet with people who you may not have classes with. There are some people who are on different teams. Another thing about recess is that there's an activity called makerspace. Uh, it's a very, very fun thing to do, at least for me. I love doing creative things. It's basically just a room with all craft supplies, anything that you could like ever dream of to do art and be creative. And it's super fun. You can really make whatever you want and the possibilities to make things are basically endless. Wow. So we're done, Dr. Lowe, right? Yeah, yeah, we're, we do we have any questions from the uh, So we're looking we before these guys go back to their classrooms because they're in academics right now. We just wanted to see if you had any questions for our students before they leave. No question. Okay. I just want to thank them so much for their time. That was awesome. So uh, that was the highlight. So thank you so much, guys. We'll take your microphones. You did a great job. And you guys can go back to class. Thank you, guys. I think they were great. I'm Dr. Lyle. Uh, we should go to the next slide. Yeah. Let me just take a picture of Question is if we can share this thought on the Zoom right now, but I don't believe we can do that. Um, we okay. can we can work to do that for the next presentation. We're sort of figuring out. Okay, the and we're kinks. figuring it out too. So yeah. I just wanted to highlight really that our website has a lot of information. We touched the kids touched about um, modified sports. That was something new this year. We have all that information, how to sign up uh, on, on the website under athletics, as well as clubs. Uh, there's also a monthly calendar that lists everything. Um, and Okay, and also tells you what day every day is. It's just confusing with the schedule, day one, day two, day three, day four, all the activities and clubs that are going on for that day. So I would just encourage you to if you have a question about logistics, um, to see our website. That's the district website. Um, so it has a lot of information on that. Is there anything you want to add? Uh, yeah, what I want to do is see if I can uh, bring up. You'd have to go to JJMS. But you're saying you can't even see this on the comic. Yeah, I think they're saying that it's it's yeah it's yeah, so it's I very small. Okay, so uh, 
in terms of the website, it is a source of terrific information. Um, some of the highlights are the clubs. Uh, the, um, there's a brochure of clubs. The schedule is, is and it's updated regularly. So there is the schedule of when the clubs meet. There's a listing of all the clubs. So that, uh, and, and instructions on how to sign up for the clubs. So it's really a, a good place to look. We are encouraging the kids to participate in clubs. Uh, it is a great thing for the kids to do. You heard the students earlier talking about how meaningful it is. And I think that that is very, very helpful. But also there's something else. As the kids get older, and as they get into high school, when they are ready to do college applications, the, uh, they do look at extracurricular activities. And when we talk about clubs, we talk about sports, we talk about participating in many, many different things. The colleges are looking for well-rounded kids. And one of the ways that that is demonstrated on a college application is by the kinds of activities they did through the years. So it's good for the kids to get used to it, to get involved. It's a great social experience for them, as well as a learning experience. So it's a great thing to do. And I just wanted to mention, not only do we have clubs and we have the modified sports program, but we have an intramural program. Um, the monthly calendar is on the website uh, where students in last year, sixth graders, we did not have this, but it, it's a really popular thing for sixth graders and seventh graders. Um, so there's a rotating uh, calendar Tuesday through Thursday where students go to the gym and participate in whatever sport or activity is available that day. So it's Definitely low stress. It's like a pickup game. Whoever shows up on that day, there's no commitment. So it's another opportunity to get involved and you know move around. And that calendar is on the website as well. So you can go once, you can go every day. It's, it's a nice opportunity in addition to the other uh, offerings. Schoology. So you know, as we embarked on this uh, virtual world last year, uh, Schoology was introduced as our platform, um, and we had a lot of bumps in the road trying to navigate it. You know, last year, um, it's really been streamlined, and, and fortunately, we're able to use the technology that and the you know learning we've gained, and there's a lot of pos positive aspects of that. But this year, we're incorporating a lot of um, other you know more traditional activities like using paper and pencil, um, doing you know more groupings with students that we didn't have the opportunities last year, but we are still using Schoology as our platform and it's really been streamlined and I encourage you to, I know you've got notifications about signing as a parent or if you use something to um, talk with your uh, student about, uh, to let allow them to show you how Schoology is working on the team, all the teachers, are uh, putting information on there. And if you access, particularly the grades tab under each course, it'll really tell you in the moment what's been handed in, what you know the current grades are. So you have more a knowledge base of what's going on. And it's a good opportunity for a conversation, um, whether it's, you know, maybe you want to attend extra help or if you're missing some assignments, planning and organization. Um, so it is a really good tool and it has been more user-friendly this year. So I, I encourage you to see and check out um, the, the different aspects of Schoology, particularly if you go on the course tiles and you look uh, under grades, they'll tell you um, really some specific information. Uh, so we are still using Schoology and teams have their pages. It is a great resource uh, for you and for your children. Uh, on Schoology, you can see what the assignments are. You can get insights into what's going on in the classroom. And on the one hand, it's, it's once you get used to it, it's not hard to use. I will tell you that your kids are experts in it. So you don't need to fish around. Let them show you the piece, the places to go on it. Uh, a lot of parents actually sign on to their kids' account so that uh, it's easier for them uh, to, to take a look and show them around. There's also, uh, we're talking about communication. The PTO has a bi weekly newsletter. Actually, monthly. Monthly. <laughs> monthly. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> okay. We 
we will update it. That, that is we, accurate. We did have an early presentation, but it's a, uh, it, it was a monthly newsletter. All sorts of important information for you uh, to, to look at, to know about what's going on in our school community and in our parent community. Uh, connect that messages. Connect that is just a term for a, a email group, basically. It is a way that the school can send out messages to various groups of families and parents uh, so that you can be updated. I think you get uh, almost weekly messages from the principal, Mr. Sviatowicz. Uh, if there's any important information that has to be shared, it will come out through the connected messaging system. Very useful in terms of communication. Um, you know, if, if I remember my days as a kid, and I'm sure yours too, uh, you got notices home, and half the time the notices stayed in backpacks, and they never made it to the parents. This way, the notices go directly to you, and you have uh, access to them easily. From the middle newsletter, this is a newsletter that the principal sends out with information from the teachers, from the schools, from the teams, so that again, you can get an insight into what's going on in your, in your kid's life um, and uh, what the teachers are saying about what's going on. It's just another form of keeping you updated on all of the events going on in school. Uh, and by the way, I don't know about you, but when my kids were in middle school, if I said, how was school today? If I got a grunt, I was lucky. Uh, and uh, this is again, Another tool so that in addition to what your kids are saying, you can hear what the teachers and the, and, and the administration of the school is saying. Just help you mention about that um, presentation, the admin presentation that we did with kids. Okay. okay, this is a good point. Thank you. So one of the things that uh, we are we are working with the kids, we are interested in our students being good citizens. Uh, Teenagers are, are young teenagers are beginning to uh, uh, lose their wings and they're a little freer than they ever were and so on. And sometimes there has to be some moderation of some of the behaviors that come out and so on. We have done a series of assemblies where uh, we are talking about citizenship, responsibility, responsibility to each other, responsibility to adults, responsibility to the community. And so far we've done about half of the school. Uh, by, the, by the middle of next week, we will have gone to every student in the school who has attended one of these assemblies. And we're just talking about the importance of your own reputation, of what people think of you, what people think of the school uh, that you go to, and what they think in general of the teenage community in this area. Uh, it's, a, it's been a wonderful, well-accepted uh, assembly, uh, and I think it, it's a really good thing for us to talk about citizenship with the kids. So that is one of the activities that has uh, been occurring uh, this week and next week. Um, okay. Another question. Who should you contact when you have a question or a concern? Very, very important because sometimes you just don't know. Um, if you, you contact the teacher on questions about the subject specific curriculum, if you want to know what the kids are doing in school, uh, how your child is doing, et cetera, you talk to the teacher. Uh, what, what does my child have to do to do well in class? Again, that's a teacher uh, conversation. What do you expect my child to do? What homework uh, should my child be having, et cetera? Again, the teacher is the, the basic source for that, uh, for that information. And when is extra help? It is listed on Schoology. Your, your, your student should know, but certainly the teacher is a resource for that. And students have the, the uh, ability to get extra help after school in every subject. It is a great way if, if uh, a student is, uh, needs a little bit uh, of support, it's a, it, it's a more personal contact with the teacher so that they can really get uh, their assignments on target and moving ahead. 
the homework expectation, again with the teacher. Not listed here, but I think important to say, what is, what is my kid's social interaction and classroom behavior like? Uh, what is going on in the classroom? Uh, again, the teacher is a great resource for that. Every team is led by a team leader. The team leader is one of the teachers on the team. Um, they, their role, in addition to being the teacher, is to be able to respond to general academic questions. If you feel it is important to arrange a conference with the teachers, uh, that is the person to contact. The, uh, the team leader will set up a schedule for you to meet with all the teachers. So that is another great resource. The school counselor, Ms. Macko, uh, support with mental health concerns, scheduling recommendation, recommendations, peer issues, academic plans. I'll just jump in on that. Uh, we'll talk more after this about some of the you know programs we do. Um, you know. Like I said from the beginning, working uh, with the students over the course of three years is really a, a great opportunity for me to get to know students. I feel some of that was, as I said, stifled last year. There are some students I don't know very well that I haven't even seen their faces. Um, and I'm making it a point this year to really try to uh, get to know the students and go out to lunch every day. Some of the programs we would have done last year are just of getting to know them and meeting in small groups and doing some classroom presentations, there were a few last year, um, but the opportunities weren't there just logistically. So I really look forward over the next uh, couple of years to get to know uh, the students. Um, and, you know, I will be ultimately, and we'll talk about that next, scheduling students into the high school um, and talking about their plans for the future. So you know, along the way, I might not see uh, your students, you know, every day or one-on-one -on -one in my office, but they're always, welcome if there's anything going on at home if there's anything you want to share my uh, door is always open and uh, i'm looking forward to a more normal experience uh, in my role this year um and, and let me just add one other thing Ms. macko is a support person for your children her role is to uh, be a confidant and another adult that your, your child can seek out. And, and as you know, at this age, the kids are reaching out to other adults very often um, to, to get advice, to help them think through issues and so on. So Ms. Macko is a wonderful resource for your children to use. Um, the assistant principal, me. Uh, we take care of the disciplinary issues. Ms. Macover does not take care of any disciplinary issues. That's not her role. And we want the kids to know that that's not her role. Uh, any issue, should there be a disciplinary issue? And I'm going to tell you something. Uh, we don't have that many in the school. Uh, and fortunately, for the most part, they're minor. So I, I, this is for me a, a pleasure to be working here. Uh, DASA, which is the bullying issues, um, rules for recess, lunch, procedures in, in classrooms, in the hallways, uh, and after school activities. If you have a concern about anything, you should feel free to call the school and, uh, and get in touch with me. I am more than happy to talk to anyone. Um, I'm not always in my office, so I will call you back as quickly as I can. Uh, almost always on the same day, uh, unless it's very late in the day and, and, uh, and tied up. But generally, I'll get back to you within the day. Uh, we can talk about anything. Uh, sometimes uh, I may direct you back to the teacher because it's really a classroom issue. And because I'm not in the classroom, I don't see what's going on. Uh, but then we can bridge back and forth with the teacher and with me. But I think it's really, really uh, significant that if you have any concerns that are serious to please get in touch with me. Uh, and the uh, principal of the school, Mr. Sviatowicz, uh, he is available to talk. He is also a, a very available principal. Um, and if you have any concerns about faculty or staff or anything like that, he will certainly uh, 
he'd be happy to talk with you about that. So just to talk a little bit about my role and the other, uh, you know, moving particularly from last year and the struggles uh, we're all facing just to, uh, after COVID, um, we've really put an emphasis on the social emotional learning of our students. Um, so there's a few things, if you could click a little more, uh, that are going on in the building. Um, we have monthly social emotional learning lessons that were developed um, by our psychologists and that are implemented by teachers. Uh, so some of the uh, skills and topics uh, that included are developing awareness of feelings and sensation, coping skills, learning effective communication skills and problem solving, understanding their values and creating goals aligned with these values. So, you know, while the academics are important, we're realizing, especially in last year's environment, you know, students are open and it just, there's a lot more to navigate this year, particularly socially. As you heard from the kids, um, they have a lot more flexibility, more access to each other, and, you know, learning how to communicate, how to problem solve, are really important skills that I think some of which last year weren't as, um, you know, the opportunities weren't there as much. So we're really putting an emphasis on this. I'm fine, figuring out where I could also support that effort. I have recently uh, followed up in on the GRIT team, um, and I'm looking to access, uh, sorry, not the GRIT team, the esteem team, and looking to follow up with the GRIT team as well, but just presented uh, to all the classes, English class, they, um, usually spend a lot of time on a Friday doing some journaling. And so I went into the classes uh, to do a mindfulness lesson that, lesson that culminated with some mindful journaling. Um, so I worked with Mr. Rand. It was a nice opportunity to get into the classes, to see the kids in that light, and to kind of reinforce some of the uh, social emotional learning that's going on in the building. It was followed by one of these lessons. And I'll look for those opportunities in each of those teams. Some of the things that I did last year are just are not as relevant this year. Some of the activities that we've done are, are changing. So um, I'll look for opportunities to go into the classroom. I will be going into the class in, ja in January to present to the students about scheduling for seventh to eighth grade. Um, we'll talk about the differences in the eighth grade schedule. Um, and I will do the same in eighth grade, which is more uh, a bigger presentation that has to do with the high school and what electives are available. For the seventh grade schedule, as you heard from the students, they're experiencing some nice changes and differences. Um, one, of the, one of the options this year, students are in standard math and accelerated math, um, and they'll have options for eighth grade. Um, uh, the accelerated class follows up with algebra one, which is a ninth grade level class taken in eighth grade, and then there's an op two options in science, earth science and standard science. Um, and the eighth grade schedule offers a little more flexibility. They do have some study hall time. They will be part of a team next year. It functions more like a high school schedule where they rotate through nine periods of the day. Um, similarities though, they'll continue with unified arts um, as they rotate now. Uh, but the schedule will be a little different and I will be going in in January and talking uh, to them all about that, what do they expect in eighth grade. Um, and there's really, uh, there'll be a timeline for a recommendation period for both math and science. Uh, science is based on how the students are doing in the first and second trimester, they're grading, and we'll send information home or we'll send it through Connect Ed about that, but you can always call me if you have any questions. The teachers will be giving recommendations for that placement. Um, so that will be happening in early January. And um, so hopefully I'll put something on Schoology, a little blast so to alert you about that. And hopefully you can talk to your students about um, that, that uh, the scheduling process. Okay. So one of the unique things we have in the middle school is something called home base. First thing when the students come in to them in the morning is they go to the home base classroom. And this is different than the old home room. Home base is a group of 15 kids in all three grade levels, six, seven, and eight. Uh, this way, there is some interaction between the grade levels. The kids can get to know each other. A lot of the sixth graders have questions for the seventh and eighth graders. The seventh and eighth graders become very 
they really do become very protective of the younger kids. Um, it, it's a very nice relationship that develops. Home base is uh, run by a home base leader who is an eighth grade student. And I'll talk about that in a second. And let me tell you a little bit more about what goes on in home base. So every morning when they come in, the students go to home base. It is a place for them to gather their thoughts, to uh, look over their homework assignments. Uh, two days a week, there is a school-wide presentation that each of the home base leaders does. Uh, these are themed presentations. So for example, during Native American Heritage Month, we did a series of presentations about Native Americans, uh, which culminated in a presentation about um, Thanksgiving. Um, you know, that's the kinds of things that go on. Uh, for the next uh, couple of weeks, we're doing presentations about giving back in response to the Christmas uh, season, uh, and Hanukkah season, so that uh, the concept of what we can do for others. Um, and uh, so th those are the kinds of themes we're looking, we're looking at. Home base lasts 20 minutes. Uh, there is, a, of course, a teacher in the room. There is the home base leader who's made the grade. Uh, the home base leaders get some training. Uh, they get uh, work on, um, uh, they get the presentations. They're all the presentations they use are the same throughout the school. They, of course, put their own spin on it. The home base teachers, the teachers in the room, are very supportive of the uh, home base leaders. So uh, that's really good. We're going to be looking at the end of this year, probably the end of May, beginning of June. We're going to offer uh, home base as an option for uh, the current seventh graders to become a home base leader. So if your student is interested in doing that, have them look out for that at that point in time, and we can uh, we, we will select them. And then uh, before school starts in the fall, there will be a home base leader training session. So. Uh, keep that in mind if you're assuming such about We have a question from the audience. How do the home based leader get chosen? The question is how does a home based leader get chosen? Basically, it's a volunteer thing, um, and there's training. Uh, it, we don't generally exclude kids, okay? So that it, what we sometimes do is we may pair up kids if we have more than. We need in terms of volunteers. Usually, the volunteers and the number of home bases we have are pretty equal. It tends to work out that way. So that works out well. Okay. Um, so here are just some of the events that are coming up. Some of them with dates. Some dates. Some we're still set. working on. Yep. Some of the dates need to be set. Curriculum night. January the 25th at 7 p.m. in the theater. Uh, Wreck and Roll, this is an event for the kids. March the 4th at 7, at 7 p.m. in the gym. March, uh, March 4th at 7 p.m. Yeah. Uh, the Mid-Year Experience, and that has not been determined yet, so that there'll be more notice about that. It will be held in February. Uh, the State Testing. We will get specific dates to you for the state testing in seventh grade. The, the children have to take a math test and an ELA test. It is done in school. The district is using paper-based testing. So it's, there will be, the kids will be filling out answer sheets. Um, number of students have accommodations. All of those accommodations are followed and met. Uh, and the specific schedule, uh, will be sent out as we get closer to the time. Uh, there'll be a, a, a March session and an April session. Um, students who uh, are, um, uh, will, students will be uh, given the appropriate amounts of time for the testing uh, and the uh, environment for the testing is, uh, you know, will, will be in groups that are appropriate uh, according to state, state guidelines. Um, and uh, also, 
We can Kiwi trip again. That has not been scheduled yet. We will be scheduling that and letting you know about it. Questions? She said uh, the questions are coming. I think some of those question marks, you know, just with COVID, uh, a lot of things we've done in the past and some of the, you know, mid, mid uh, year experiences of just were looking logistically and seeing what's what's feasible. So some of that's still unknown. No questions. Okay. Uh, you know, I would like, if I may, to say just one quick thing about uh, lunch and recess. Um, because the kids have been really terrific. Uh, because of COVID, there are more restrictions on them than we would like, but it is a safety issue. Uh, and, and we have made some adjustments in, in the lunch and recess schedules to uh, keep it as flexible as possible. On indoor days, now that we're coming up on the winter se uh, season, we will, have, we will have more indoor days. We have tried to expand the activities out so that uh, we have that maker space that was described earlier. Uh, we have the gym available uh, whenever possible. Um, you have to remember that whenever we have lunch period, one third of the school is having lunch, but two thirds of the school is having regular classes. So that does create a complication in terms of scheduling some of these things. Um, uh, we will have uh, on indoor days, the, the kids will be able to come to the auditorium uh, and there's usually a video playing there. Um, we go out as much as possible uh, so that uh, the kids should definitely be wearing their coats outside. Uh, I will tell you, there's always one or two kids who come up there in a t-shirt and shorts, um, and then they get cold, obviously. So please uh, tell your kids to make sure they have their jackets on when they go out for, uh, for recess. Um, we go out, as I said, as much as possible. However, we are going to be starting something now that it's getting colder, that uh, if a kid is cold outside, we will have the, uh, uh, the theater available for them to come inside and sit in some someplace warm. Um, and that we are starting now because the, the, the weather has reached that temperature. So that we are we will be doing that. Um, chances are on those days there will not be a video uh, playing here, but uh, uh, we still have a warm place to be and they can take something to read out or something like that. Another question from our audience. <laughs> I had a question about um, so the earth science versus standard science is that going to be like with math where the teacher recommends um, the student for that so yeah there's a recommendation oh, the, the question was about earth science what the recommendation process is um, so yes in the uh, midpoint of the second trimester Mr. Sriati was going to correct me if I'm wrong um, that teachers will make a recommendation. It's really based on the grade, uh, what they've uh, achieved, you know, first report card grade, the second. Um, we do have an open door policy. We, we really recommend you take the teacher's feedback because, you know, but at the same time, we also, it's a personal decision with, you know, your family um, and really take into account your child's stress level, what they can handle, their work habits, because, um, and, and we'll, I'll talk more to the students, but it is, what it does for science is it, as you take, you know, typically students take earth science in uh, ninth grade, so they take in an eighth, so they, it gains them an extra year of science. Um, the sequence is earth science, bio, chemistry, physics, so it allows an AP option they choose. Um, and in math, uh, if they're accelerating seven, they'll go into algebra one, um, and it also allows another fifth year of science to get to the highest calculus. But I will say, in the high school, and we'll talk about this more in eighth grade, there's a, options to accelerate and take on responses. So if the student doesn't accelerate in seventh with their readiness, we never want to rush a subject like math. Uh, it's really important to have a good foundation. Um, there's an, a class at the high school called GAP, which is Geometry Algebra 2 Pre-Calc. It's a three-year sequence in two years, so it allows you to get to that calculus if you're more ready and you you know hit your stride in math. So it really affords, there's, you didn't miss the boat in, if you didn't in seventh grade, 
And in, in addition, for students who maybe become stronger in math and want to challenge, we offer honors options in every math and science after earth science, after algebra. So it's geometry or geometry honors, bio or bio honors. And that honors is really as a rigor, as more work, or, you know, deeper understanding of the content, more independence. So there's an opportunity not only, you know, to accelerate, which is that year jump, but to take, that's not for everybody, but to take honors courses in the subject you're taking, you know, math and science after, um, or science and algebra. And I will say too, you know, while that's not offered early on in humanities, there's a lot of great options at the high school. So if students are, you know, more humanities based and really want to extend their time there, you know, some of it is a choice because if you're taking bio honors, you know, in the high school, it's a time that you're committing. Um, and so it's really, there's, you know, other choices available when you get to that point. And so not to stress anybody out because it's a really premature decision, but we'll be talking about this in eighth grade and a lot more detail about the high school and about balancing time and about taking classes that, you know, you're interested in. Um, Mr. Well touched about the extracurriculars of really now trying to figure out what your interests are and how to kind of, you know, like focus in on what you want to do outside of class. Okay. We do have a question on the chat, um, so I'll just read it. It says, I know, um, I know this should be addressed somewhere else, but talking about cold weather and jackets, how are the kids supposed to fit their belongings into the extremely narrow lockers? Most backpacks are at least triple the size of the locker opening. This is not a new issue, but is recurring each season. I'll just say what, you know, I say to kids about the locker, I mean, I, it's, I don't know, I'm sorry that's happening, but you know, I, when I tell kids you don't jam your your backpack into the locker full. What I suggest is you take out, you bring your stuff uh, in the morning. There's locker stops, as, as the students uh, mentioned, in the morning before and after lunch and in the afternoon. So um, if you take out the contents of your backpack, hang it on one side, put the books on top where there's a shelf or at the bottom, you should be able to fit your uh, jacket next to it. Otherwise, you always can leave things in the classroom. I mean, a lot of students aren't using their locker and they're choosing to leave their backpacks in uh, the classroom prior to lunch. The teachers are amenable to that. If you walk by a classroom, the backpacks are in the hallway or they're in the, in the classes. So teachers allow students to do that. So if that's happening and you have a jacket, you should fit in the locker or you can leave it you know, in a classroom. They're, they're pretty flexible. So if, 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 if your student is having a particular problem with that, feel free to call me and I'll figure out a scenario. At this point, and uh, the whole lunch recess thing is something we, we are throughout the year reviewing uh, because we want to reduce restrictions as much as we can on the kids. Uh, we know that this is not an ideal situation. As the students said this morning, uh, the restrictions are far less this year than they were in the past. Um, and this is something that's under constant review. At this moment, all the students before lunch go to a classroom where the monitors meet them. Uh, and they can either leave their backpacks in the locker or they can leave it in that classroom. And many, many students are choosing to uh, leave it in the classroom. Again, this is an ongoing review uh, of issues and items, and um, we'll, we'll keep everyone informed uh, as to what happens and how we can loosen some of these restrictions as well. And right now, they can leave it in the classroom uh, that they, they go to right before lunch. Mr. Sammons, it's really nice to see the students in a more normal setting. They go out for lunch. Uh, Mr. Loeb and I, Dr. Loeb and I are out. Seeing just even the noise on the contest field, seeing kids interacting with each other, it's just it's really, really uh, just lovely compared to last year. And this continues to be a work in progress. And I think the students are feeling um, more engaged and more connected, um, which is nice to see. Thank you, everyone. Okay, let me just thank you as well.